Well, it's a comp Wednesday on a Thursday. Uh, we're getting ready to go. Um, really an exciting matchup. This is a difficult team to play in many ways. Uh, they're such a good team across the board. Their numbers are great, and, and uh, the, the players, we know so many of these guys, they're so familiar to us because they've done so much. And, uh, and Coach Zimmer's system is, is a problem. So this is a really, it's a, a, the kind of matchup that we need. We need tough matchups with teams that really challenge us in, in many ways, and, and uh, this is one of them for sure. And they keep coming at us, so it's just the way it is. But, uh, so we got to get cranked up, and have a good week, and get ready to go, and, and uh, look forward to a big opportunity Monday night. You know, there was some talk on the on the broadcast I hear about about the crowd, and, and uh, I think the twelves will probably uh, go crazy on this one, just like they always do. And, and uh, there's, let's not leave any doubt at all. Let's be wild and loud and have fun and enjoy the heck out of it. We'll try to play accordingly to make it make it such. So, we'll look forward to it. How big a test is that run defense? I think they're like number two in yards. Yeah, they're great. You know, they're they're just all the players that are up front, the guys that have played, uh, they know the game. Um, they mask what they're doing exceedingly well. They're they're fast. They're athletic, and the experience really gives them a, a makes them really difficult. You mentioned playing good teams and having any challenges like this. Why not just want to play bad teams and get easy wins? <laughs> Every game is there. Games are all amazing challenges. These guys pose more challenges because of their background and their history than, than others. They're such a good situational team that that uh, you know red zones good, third downs good, uh, explosive plays are hard to get. I mean everything about them. They, they, the run defense. I mean everything about these guys. The passing numbers are crazy. The quarterback's completing seventy one point three percent of his passes this late in the year. It's crazy that he's he's that sharp. And and uh, but that's who they are. They got a receiver who's got 98 catches. Another guy's got 84 catches, you know. Um, so it's, it's a really terrific challenge. What is it about that combo of Diggs and Thielen that's different from the last time you've seen them, where they've progressed to be these high powered weapons that they are now? Well, they, they seem extremely well connected with Cousins. You know, they're, they're, uh, the intricacies of the things that they're running and the timing that they're able to show consistently on really good stuff, good concept stuff. <clears throat> um, the guys come through and make the catches. They're both good after the catch. They both get down the field. They're, um, they're possession guys. They're down the field guys. They're, they're, they have all of that ability in them. So it just makes them really hard. And, and the QB knows it, you know, and, and they, they seem to really have hooked up well with the quarterback, too. And the execution is really as good as you can get. Obviously, you've seen Cousins with Washington. Just how is he different in that system? Obviously, the. It just seems he's at his very, very best. You know, as, as the guys keep growing, and he's the same same years I think as Russ. Uh, they just keep getting better. You know, as they grow and they learn, and they have you know great coaching, and they just take advantage of it, and uh, they continue to to become you know more in command of the game. And he looks like he's totally got it wired. What is it about that passing game though for the Vikings? Because they they keep going to that, and they don't need to use the run as much as other teams. Why does that continue to be so consistent? Around the course of the game. It's a West Coast origin, you know, the the, the background of, of the scheme that they run, which has always been about possession and, and catching and running and all of that. When you complete, you know, over 70% of your passes, you can move the football with your short game, which they can do as, as they do. And, and uh, the running attack, they've got good runners. And Delvin's, he's really good. And, and uh, Mark, uh, uh, What's the guy, uh, Tavius? He, he's really good. They, they got big time strike ability. Um, they're both averaging over four yards of carry. Last week they averaged almost eight yards of carry in the game, you know. So um, this is just a, it's just a really loaded up team that they can go either way. They could run it or they can throw it. Does that shift how you kind of coach up defense this week? Because the last few weeks it's been all about stopping a, a runner that was, you know, averaging 100 or more yards it, a game. Because of the efficiency of their throwing game, it totally attracts our attention. We have to be on it we, we, because they'll throw you out of the stadium. They're, they're just, again, it goes back to their efficiency so good. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it makes it really hard. So, but you, you know, but I hear the coach talking a little bit about wanting to run the football a little bit more, too. So we have to start where we always start and start with the running game first. But it does take a lot of focus uh, to even have a chance to slow the, them down there. They're averaging. I don't know, 275 or something a game throwing, you know, which is crazy numbers. What's your favorite part about going into the final quarter of the regular season? We had a chance to finish. We didn't do something with this season. You know, there, there's a chance. Um, 
you know, hope is alive. Hope is strong in, in the building, you know, and, and in the locker room. And uh, we're in control of it. You know, if we do, the, the, you know, play really good football this week, then <clears throat> we set up next week. And then just each one of these weeks, they're, they're playoff weeks, you know, and, and uh, they're championship games. I know you hear me say that a lot, but this is, this is what we have been preparing for to play at this time and play really well and, and be familiar and comfortable with the challenge of that. And, uh, you know, there's nothing better than finishing, you know, in sports. You know, when you finish well and you do right at the end of the games, the end of the seasons, and this is it. It's fourth quarter time. What are the traits or tendencies that teams that finish well that you've had have shown compared to others that maybe haven't finished well? What a team that finishes strong the final quarter of the season, what do they usually do? I think they know themselves really well. They know who they are, and they, so they know how to recreate the consistency and, and bring it back to life again. And, and uh, there seems to always be a – a focus that that separates those teams, you know, and they're playing visibly, obviously on on game, you know, they're on their stuff. And uh, I, I don't know how you can do that unless you really know yourself, you know, and that means you know what you can count on and, and where your strengths and your weaknesses are, and and, and you maximize those. That's um, that that's really you know the makeup of the teams that finish well. You and Coach Zimmer have similar backgrounds, DBs coach, defensive coordinator. Do you feel like you and him are kind of a kindred spirit in how you see the yeah, game. Yeah, I, I, matter of fact, I do. Yeah, and and uh, um, you know he's more recently been been involved with you know running the defenses all the, the great years they had at Cincinnati. Um, my years of you know, totally being in charge of the defense are a little bit farther removed, but. Um, most defensive guys, you know, they're going to emphasize, they're, you know, playing tough on defense. They're going to emphasize getting after you, and they want to run the football, and, you know, and, and that's kind of the way we most of us have been brought up. And uh, so I think we're similar in that regard. Why is that? Why do defensive background coaches like running the ball? Um, because it's the best way to not screw it up. <laughs> really, you know, it's the best way to play the game, and it, because the, the games are always lost. They're always lost. You know, you make errors, and uh, and that's why that turnover issue is is of paramount importance to us. It's the most important thing that we we talk. It's the first thing I ever say to our team every single year we get together. And we start every year. I start there because that's what determines the outcomes of the games. When when we don't turn the football over, we our winning percentages are ridiculously high. Not even being in the plus, just when we don't turn it over. And, uh, and when we're in the plus, our numbers are phenomenal. You know, and they always have been. And that's how can you play to make that, you know, that uh, factor of you know, a strength of yours. You know? Right now we're plus 11. You know, that's, that's a good spot to be. But if we wind up plus 18 or something like that, we're going to have a hell of a finish this season. And so we've we got to keep going and keep pushing on it. And that calls both sides of the ball and everybody's conscious to get that done. I think most all defensive coaches are pretty tuned into that. Why are the reasons Russell's always been so good at not turning the ball over a lot? He's got a, he's got a great awareness. You have to have phenomenal awareness and, and, and conscience, and he knows how we play, and he understands what I'm saying. I mean, he, he bought in from the first first time he was with us. You know, he bought into the philosophy and the approach, and he's he's championed it forever, and uh, he's been phenomenal at it. Um, you know, and he uh, he evaluates really well. He doesn't put the ball in, in problem areas. Rarely, rarely does he do that, and, and uh, it's just part of his makeup. And it's something we have grown to count on. After reviewing the 49ers film, what do you most want out of the secondary? Well, we got to get rid of the, the couple of mistakes that, that you know that uh, that hurt us, and then the, we we missed like three crucial tackles that were worth about 80 yards, you know, after the after the miss. And so it's it's really it's it's the error, a couple errors that we got to clean up, and then the tackling needs to be better to, and, and the game would be different. 44 explosives in the last four games. Say again. 44 explosives in the last four games. Is this offense the way it's playing right now about as good in that regard as you've had? Well, yeah, that's when we've been good in the past, it's been like that. We've been in double digits in explosives, and, and we've always been a good explosive team when we're running the football. And uh, it's not just the throwing game, but it certainly does help us in the throwing game, and it's been a factor that we've always counted on. It, it, matter of fact, it didn't, it wasn't available to, or you know, wasn't clear earlier in the season, and we've we've kind of caught up and got it going, and, and we've been able to play off the run game and maximize that. And that's you know, eleven a game's pretty darn good, you know, when you can keep it steady like that. I don't think anybody's probably done any better than that. So that's that's the standard that we're shooting for. Pete, you've, Pete, you've mentioned that Michael Kendricks has looked good physically. Would he be ready to um, take like a full load of snaps on Monday or would you prefer to kind of 
He's well, been. we'll show you. You know, let me get through the week first, and we'll figure that out. But we'll show you how you know what our thoughts are at game time. But um, he's a really well-conditioned player. He was when he was here before, and he, and he came back in great shape. Um, so I, I, I think we'll be able to count on him to, to take a good, you know, good dose. And, and we've, we were in good shape with Austin. Austin played really well last week, and those guys can both play that spot. And I don't have any problem with either one of those guys in the game. Going back to the tackling, is it the technique that gets emphasized or the positioning that gets emphasized to clean that up? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, there's a um, there's a mentality to it to start with. You know, p positioning, you're putting yourself in the right spot and the right leverage to make make good uh, consistent tackles. That's part of it. And it's uh, it's also being poised. You know, sometimes we take a shot, and we go flying at guys instead of being under control more than we than we, we it's necessary for the moment. Um, and then sometimes we we err because we're going after the football so so much. Um, so it's a combination of putting that all together. Um, that, that gets us back on track. Mostly, it's it's the way we're mentally we're prepared to make the, the play as we're approaching it. You know, we got to get the right frame of mind for the situation that's presented. And when we do that, we're pretty good. And we took a couple of shots and just you know just bounced off guys, and and uh, you know their guys look pretty good running the ball after the catch. How hard has it become to coach tackling and intricacies with you can go pads after you? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a challenge. It's a it's a challenge for all of us in football now. It's just it, the game has changed. You know, we used to just knock the heck out of one another. You know, and we practice and be tackling all through the week and all that in, in, in days past. Um, you know, we're only allowed to wear pads so often, and so that's part of it. But we have we have learned how to. How to practice tackling without pads on, even without helmets, you know, and that's been part of. It's helped us um, stay abreast, but um, it's still an issue. I think all across the league, tackling is always an issue, you know, and, and uh, we're trying to be great at it. We weren't last week. You touched on Jaron earlier this week, Jaron Reed. It, did you see a pass rusher maybe able to emerge eventually, or is this kind of surprised you? What is it? Um, he he's been a he was a real dedicated run defender coming out, you know, and we did not see him um, specialize in rushing the passer. His I don't his numbers weren't great. First couple of years, his numbers weren't great either. And he's just emerged uh, through his focus and dedication and and, uh, and hard work. Um, he's become a complete player. Talked about Clint back when Clint Hurt came in here as being a guy that can kind of help those guys pass rush runs. How how much is he? Involved? Well, I think it's, you're seeing a great example of it. You know, that's what you're looking at. And Frank's consistency in his numbers too. You know, and, um, and we'll see. You know, in the young guys too, and Rasheem coming on in, in years to come. You know, I think you'll see him turn into a terrific pass rusher. You know, Dion, all those guys are working at it. But Clint is really he is really well schooled and and, uh, and a, a great communicator about the, about the rush game. With David Moore and the leap that he's made from you know practice squad last year into what he's done, what's the biggest thing for him as far as either physical or mental? Where's the biggest improvement from last year to this year? Well, usually the physical is a lot more mental. Um, a guy actually said that one time. There was a guy when we were at the Jets that said, I think the physical is much more mental. But um, uh, we're talking about receivers, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, David's just going to grow. He's just going to become more comfortable with with um, the experience. You know, the, there's so many first time experiences for a young guy, and he really didn't get through those last year. So this is a first time run run at it. Uh, next year and the year after that will be big growth years for him. And uh, I think you will see him just become more comfortable with all the situations that occur, and that has to do with reading coverage and, and adjusting the routes and and. Uh, taking advantage of opportunities with techniques that guys are playing on you and all of that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of stuff that um, it, a lot of receivers, it takes them a couple of years to adapt, you know, into the league because we're so precise about stuff and the quarterbacks, you know, demand that they, they're so precise about stuff. And so it's, you know, he's doing really well and he's got a great upside. So we're really excited about his future. In his second year as a starter, has Shaq Griffin met your expectations? Um, yeah, let's let, let the whole thing play out, but he's, he's, He's doing a good job. You know, he's played good, solid football. He's been out there the whole time for two years. You know, and uh, stuff's going to happen. Um, you know, it's going to be hard at times, and he's he's been really consistent. Um, he hasn't been a problem to us. You know, but there's always plays, more plays that you can make. Um, but I think he's doing he's doing fine with it. Uh, but there's there's stuff that you know we're going to keep working on. He'll be better in the next couple of years too. Kind of like the receivers. Need the action green uniforms. Yeah, we love those. No, yeah, I love them. No, I love them. I was, I was I was banging the drum for him way back in the day. I, I love him. Is there any more clarity to KJ Wright's uh, situation? Uh, he's he had a good day yesterday. Worked well. He feels good again the next day. And so we're going to just take it one day at a time and see how he progresses. Um, he's upbeat about it, uh, but I don't have a timeline for you. If you go back to Shaq Griffin, is it just a learning curve in that position? 
I mean, the player that the experience just has to for them yeah. to get yeah. that. The, the, the cornerback position, the way we play, it can you can accelerate the process for these guys because the the consistency of playing on the line of scrimmage. There's only so many things that can happen, and once the guys get out there and they get familiar with it, they can get. You've seen this. We play a lot of young guys, and, and they've been able to do it. Um, but to really take advantage of it, it it's, it takes a couple of years so you can start to understand the situations and the opportunities that are presented and things like that. The technique part of it and playing consistently, solidly out there, we can kind of get that done early. But um, the, there's a jump in there, you know, and that, that can happen if the guys, you know, have it, have it in their makeup to go ahead and take advantage. And so, it, but they'll, they'll develop, you know, in, in time. They're going to get better. They're going to see things more. They'll understand how to take advantage of the, of the opportunities. And that's all part of experience. One more Pete, win and he'll have uh, the most regular season wins in Hawk history. Is there one or two in the past, a regular season win, that you kind of look back on as a, maybe sticks out or as a catalyst-type win that you've had? Probably the, the most significant one is the one at Chicago in uh, – in Russ's rookie season. That's probably the one that was the game when in the middle of the third quarter, it hit me like, we got to cut this guy loose. He's too good. We're holding him back, you know, and, and I remember saying it to the coaches at the time, let's go, don't, you know, don't, no restrictions, nothing. Let's let him, he's, gonna, he's got a chance to be out there winning the game for us if we give him an opportunity. And, and uh, we haven't been the same since. Um, so that was probably, man, right off the top, that was the first one that comes to mind. Pete, what ability, abilities or attributes did you see in Austin Calitro last year for that brief time you had him that's kind of ma manifested? Yeah, I can't tell you. I, was, I can't tell you that I'm, I'm pulling that, that information up like that was the key when we knew, you know, I don't know that. He, he really made himself a spot in camp, and he did a great job. And, and uh, I can't say we didn't have the, the, this lofty expectation that he would be a starter. We didn't know. We just, he was a young kid we thought it would be fun to be competing with the guys. And he took off, you know, and he was tough and smart and, and uh, could play in teams and all that kind of stuff. And he's come through and played a lot of football, a really good ball for us. But I can't say there was a point back then. I, I wish I could tell you that, but. <laughs> when you released Tom Johnson because of the roster move back in September, was, did you expect to have him back a we hoped later? To. Yeah, we had hoped to. We liked him and we had hoped to, but it didn't work out. What, what has he shown you, I guess, up to that point? And what, has he, what has he done with Minnesota? Um, he's been a, a terrific player over a long period of time uh, in, with a uh, really good motor, um, savvy, um, the consistency was it was always there. He played. He kind of rolled through their their stuff. You know, as a, as a last year, he played the most he had played mo probably in his career in a season. And uh, um, you know, he just showed that he could be an, an every down guy for you. And we thought of him as an older guy that we would want to, you know, make sure we counted his reps and, and took you know full advantage of that. We just didn't get the chance to stay steady with it. And and uh, he's doing well. He's got three sacks and three and a half sacks or something. He's doing a good job. Did you, you guys make a real run at Sheldon Richardson and trying to re-sign him? The, we, we weren't able to uh, to go to where it was. We wanted to. We would like to have had him back, too. We, when we took him, we thought we would be able to do that. But, you know, just the market just kind of took him away from us. The, the, the XFL announced yesterday that it's going to be a team in Seattle. Do you have any thoughts on another football team at CenturyLink? Yeah. The, when I saw the note for the first time, I was fired up. I thought it was awesome, you know, for – and the first thought I had is just the, the following for the Sounders and in, any sport we play here, our fans go crazy. So I hope that they'll really enjoy it and, and embrace it. And and, uh, and the fact that that would be here in town, I, I would love to have that, you know, and get to watch guys and see guys develop and all that kind of stuff, you know. And you know, I, I don't need, I don't know the makeup of the XFL games at this point. I don't know if the rules are the same or is this the XFL that's the. Uh, they're not wearing the thorns on their helmets and stuff like that, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so whatever that is. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's great. Do you look at these, at these new leagues as kind of feeder leagues, like, as you said, yes. developmental leagues potentially yeah. for you guys? Wish, yeah, we wish they, they would become that, you know. It's a, a great place to bring guys up that, that need the work, you know, need the time. It's great for quarterbacks in particular. You know, we just love to have, a, you know, for Alex Magoo to have a place to play and where he could develop. You know, that would be awesome for him when he doesn't get the reps this year, you know. So uh, for a lot of guys, it would be a, a benefit. Any change, uh, DJ Fluker, any, any change in his situation? Not yet. Have you crossed paths much with uh, Urban Meyer? And if so, do you have any thoughts about the, the physical and the mental toll that uh, the coaching can take? On a body. Yeah, um, we haven't crossed much. Uh, we've talked about players over the years and draftable guys and stuff like that and some 
players coming you know, that were available in, for trade opportunities and things like that. But I followed him really closely, and he's been a remarkably successful coach uh, and a really, really dedicated, hard worker. You know, he's really driven himself. And uh, that's just like of any of us in any walks, you know, if, if we push that hard for that long, you know, there's sometimes it takes a toll. and, and uh, I mean, you know, you might, might be accelerating the process a little bit more than you need to. But um, if he's not coaching because of his health and for his family and all that, man, that's the right choice. He's doing exactly the right thing that he needs to do. And, and uh, But it can be hard, you know. And there's, there's a little bit of stress with this job, you know. and Not a lot, but there's a little bit. And, uh, you know, and, and people deal with it differently. And they can, you know, and everybody's so so uniquely different that it's your body makeup and how you handle it and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's certainly there's a lot of coaches. You know, the really good coaches that are on television that retired. You know, in their 50s. You know, and uh, they had great careers and then they're doing other stuff now. I don't understand why they would do that, but uh, but they, you know, there's a lot of guys that have done that. I think to lessen the the, the wear and tear on your body. Oh, I was just going to follow up with just how do you what is, what a, has another coach told you about how to manage your uh, the, the level of energy and the level to keep away? Another coach told me don't read the papers. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll even give this to you. What, what the heck? That uh, never read the articles, but I always know what they said. <laughs> do you expect to have uh, KJ back? At all this year? Do you expect to have KJ back at all? I'm hoping to. We're hopeful. Yeah, right now we're hopeful. You know, we got another month here. We got hopefully we can get him back. How do you strike the work job balance? How do you what's your I'm guessing that's a Bud Grant thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a good deal of it is. And and uh, interesting that we're you know, it's a Minnesota week, but um, yeah, he, he always was kind of the epitome of balance. He in maybe in, in the world there really isn't any th such thing as balance in this regard, but uh, some people have said that. But but understood, you know, and he understood how to how to have an entire life with his family and and with his uh, pursuits, hunting and fishing, and and be a world class coach, you know. And and uh, he had his own way, and there's only one Bud Grant and all that, and I can't be him, and I'm not trying to be him, but. Uh, it was ex extremely <clears throat> obvious, and, and he made a big impression about how to handle things and how to deal with stuff, and and uh, that's how you gauge the time frames and, and decision making and, and all kinds of things can help you stay clear and stay fresh and, and uh, give yourself the best chance to deal with it. Um, so he has really he was a big factor for sure. Did you see the name industry after him this year in Minnesota? Did they? Bud Grant White. Yeah, did you see that? He, I think he sold. He's selling one of my sweatshirts from back in the day. Yeah, it's in the garage sale. So, you know, dang. Pete, uh, Kendricks hasn't been with you guys very long, but as a veteran and a guy who won a Super Bowl last year, um, do you see him bringing a kind of a leadership presence um, in, in this locker room at all? Um, he, he really hasn't had a chance to be that, a factor in that regard yet, um, but he, he is. A, he's a real pro. He really understands the game. He picks things up really quickly. He's really savvy and into it. And, and in that regard, <clears throat> when he's here long enough, he, he will rub off on other guys because you just can't help but notice it. He's really focused. And it's really important to him to do great. And, and uh, that's a, a terrific model. So that's leadership in itself. I, I don't think he's had enough time to, be, to have the impact yet. Um, but um, hopefully he will. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you.